Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can deploy this uh, application on your local machine uh, for development purpose. And if you think your application is already ready and you are ready to deploy it over some hosting, I'm going to share your link. Uh, and using that link, it, you can deploy it over your Firebase hosting. I'll also share a link if you want to deploy your application to the Heroku uh, cloud services. And uh, you know, if you watch those videos, you should be able to deploy your application uh, to the production settings. Now, this video, I'm going to show you how you can deploy this app on your local server, on your local machine for the development purpose. So today, actually, I'm using a Windows machine. So I'm going to share the steps you can follow to set up your development environment on your local machine. Uh, so first thing first, you need to go to the Node.js. And actually, this, as I said, stated earlier, this application is made in Angular and Firebase. Angular itself is uh, based on the Node.js. So first thing you would need, you need a successful Node.js installation on your machine. Now, if you are watching this video and you want to, you have a Mac machine, or even you have a Chrome OS, like, you know, a Chromebook kind of a machine, I will share the link you can use. Uh, and in that link, if you watch those videos, you will be able to uh, set up your Angular environment on the Chrome OS machine or Mac OS machine. Just follow this link and you will be able to download Node and make those, um, you know, you'll be able to set up your development environment. Uh, you will need a Node.js installation on your local machine. Uh, and anytime if you are using any JavaScript framework like uh, React or Vue.js or Angular, I highly recommend that you should have the Node.js installed on your machine. In case if you don't know what Node.js is, it's a runtime JavaScript engine. So here, I think uh, you can uh, download this long-term support version or you can use the current version. Depending on the time you're watching this video, I think any version you grab, is, it should be fine. So I'm going to grab the correct uh, current version here. Now there are different things, you know, different ways you can install uh, Node.js on your machine. So the way I like it, you know, I always grab a zip, uh, zip copy. So I am going to download this zip. Uh, on my machine and what I'm going to do, I'm going to unzip this in a folder. Uh, the usually, you know, the way I do it, I always keep all of my executables inside a, inside my own directory. Um, again, it's totally up to you, you know, how do you prefer it? Like, for example, I have a program called program. Um, I, sorry, I have a folder, local folder called program. And as you can see, all of my Android Studio, IntelliJ, uh, you know, any, you know, code editor like IntelliJ, VS Code or Sublime or Atom, Anaconda, you see everything I keep under one folder here. So same thing here, I'm going to, you know, unzip my note folder here and um, uh, let me just first download it first and I'm going to resume my recording once that is done. So I unzip everything inside my program folder here. As you can see, this folder name is very long. And the second thing I want to, once I expand this folder, I want to make sure that there is a file called node.exe. Now this is the main node executable file here, and you must have that. If you don't have that, stop it right here and just uh, re-grab, uh, you, know, uh, you know, grab a copy of the latest node.js from the website again, okay? Now next thing what I want to do here, uh, again, I don't like this, you know, this is a too long file name for me, so I'm going, just going to rename it and call it call it in node that's it so at this point open any command prompt window as i said earlier you can use the inbuilt terminal command prompt window here or you can open a cmd anything is fine if if at this point if i do a node hyphen v that means i'm checking the node version it should come back and saying okay node is not recognized and the reason is because i just uh, downloaded a zip so right now my windows registry it doesn't know where to find that node.exe so what i'm going to do i'm going to right click on this and i'm going to copy the path and then let me go to the, my Windows directory here, sorry, Windows search here, and I'm going to type the environment. So basically what I'm looking for here, edit the system, uh, you know, environment variables for your account. Now click on the path here, click on edit, and next thing you want to do here, uh, you know, you just create a new environment account here and paste that, you know, uh, paste the path where your node.exe file is. Now if you click OK, click OK, that's, you know, you just save uh, your node.exe to the Windows environment file here. Now, at this point, I think if I do a node-v is again is going to, um, I, I doubt it, it will, you know, uh, reflect my changes. So I'm going to get out of this command prompt window, open a new command prompt window again. And this time, if I type in node-v, Okay, guys, so as, you, as you can see, it came back with the node version here. Second thing I want to do is NPM, you know, is built in into the node, but I'm just going to check this anyway. Now, next thing is you have to have is the Angular installation. So let's go head out to the angular.io 
angular.io let's go get it started so i believe the requirement to run the angular on your machine you have to have a node.js of minimum version 8.x and 10.x as you can see we have a 12.2 version, 12 version so we should be fine so the next thing is you have to install the angular cli and i highly recommend to install it globally so that you know you don't have to um, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about the run, running the ng command from anywhere else from your command prompt window. Okay, so I'm going to pause my record again, recording again, and I will resume once this recording is um, completed. Okay, so my Angular CLI just finished installation. At this point, if I go to the command prompt window and if I type an ng hyphen v, so it's going to come back and tell me that Angular CLI has been installed on my machine. So as you can see, ng hyphen v, and it gave me you know all of, all the different options. So right now, I think all the uh, my development environment environment is all set up. Now is the time to go back to my GitHub repository here. And the, from the GitHub repository, again, I'm going to share this link to the video description. All you need to do, you can, if you already have a Git installed on your machine, you can just like, you know, um, grab this uh, using this command. But, you know, you can also download a zip. So, you know, in either case, if you do not have access to Git or, you know, you don't know what Git command is, uh, you can just download the entire zip here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to in, download this entire zip and I'm going to extract that in a folder. And uh, let me just start doing that. And uh, once, you know, I'm going to resume my recording once I extract everything into my local folder. Perfect. So now, uh, as you can see, I extracted everything, all the zip file content inside a folder, inside WIP, SMS. So now let's go uh, head out to this directory. So in the command prompt window, I'm just going to uh, switch to this directory. Uh, WIP SMS. So make sure that you are inside the directory. And if you do an LS, make sure that you see that package.json file because the next command you are going to run is npm install um, hyphen hyphen save. You don't need hyphen hyphen save, but you know just to npm install is going to you know um, you know install the latest dependencies of your package JSON. So actually this command it expects is going to read your package.json file and whatever the is go, whatever the packages uh, your application will need is going to install that. So at this point I'm going to hit enter and again I'm going to pause my recording here and we'll come back once everything is uh, installed. Okay, so as you can see, all of everything is installed on my machine. Next thing I want to do here, I just do a ng serve um, hyphen hyphen open. So what this command is going to do is going to start servicing, uh, serving this application and is going to open, um, you know, a default browser window, which is which will serve localhost to 4200. Uh, I'll come back to this in a minute. And if it doesn't open a, a you know browser window here, so what you can do is just open any browser window on the same machine, and all you need to do is go to this local host 4200 okay so and it should like you know once application is compiled it you should see um, you know right now it's not compiled is that's why it's not unable to that's why it's unable to connect but you know as soon as it compiles this will come back here okay so now my application as you can see it has come back now one thing you want to make sure that everything compiles to success if you have any error that you may have to go back and repeat all the steps again but as you can see, uh, everything compiled pretty good here and uh, my application is already serving. At this point, my application is ready, but actually it's, it's not going to do any good for you because I haven't set up the database yet. So next thing is inside that SRC directory, you will see, you know, inside your environment file, you will see two different files here, environment.prod.ts and environment.ts. Now, before I make any corrections here, I want to go back and make sure that, you know, you uh, make sure I want to show you how to set up your file. Firebase. So head out to firebase.google.com. Again, if you are new to Firebase and if you don't already have an account, I highly suggest that you go and set up an account. All you need is a default Gmail ID and you know, you can, um, I think you can uh, use a Spark version, which is their free version. Uh, you know, as so as soon as you can use any Gmail ID, as soon as you have this uh, Firebase setting here, Firebase um, open here, go to console. Okay. Now, there are a couple of things you have to do on the Firebase. Now, I'm going to put everything, all of those information into in, in, in my GitHub repo. Now, what you have to do here, you have to set up the, once your database is set up. So first thing is like, you know, let's create a new project. So in my case, you know, I already have a project. So, but again, you know, I highly recommend you create a new project there. 
okay let me just use what i already am using okay next thing you have to do here so uh, click on this little icon which is the web settings icon here okay so i'm going to click on this new add app and make sure that you choose this web version uh, and then you know you can get a app nickname i'm just going to put a test here for the testing purpose here register app and uh, once you go uh, once you click on this one you need these firebase settings so don't copy this web only copy this portion api key and uh, our domain or whatever this is all these settings you need to copy okay and next thing is you want to come back to this environment file here now inside this environment directory you will see two different files environment.ts and environment.prod.ts make sure that you copy paste these two things inside this one okay now um, once you do this, uh, please don't use my settings because you know this is my. I'm going to delete this after this demo. Uh, but you all you need to do copy these settings here and paste it here. Okay. Now let's go back. I'm going to disrecord this one. Second thing you will need. Let's go to the database side of it, and uh, you go to the roles. Again, you know when I do the later on videos, you know I'll, I'll I can walk you through you know how to set up the different roles here. So. A different rules for these things. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this. But basically, all you need just uh, don't pay attention to you know. So I'm going to copy you know just delete everything here. So hang on. Okay. So in your project, you will see something like this. All you need to do here, copy this whole thing where it says SMS app starts. Okay, basically what these things are, these are your database uh, rules here. Okay, take this, copy this thing here and go back to your settings and paste it here. Okay, and make sure that you don't see any error. All you need to do, click publish, that's it. Okay, that's all you need to do in this one. Okay, I'm going to discard this one because I already have done this. Okay, now let's go to the data part. One last thing you will need here and please pay attention to this part. You have to have a collection called SMS roles here. Now, roles, as a you know, if you walk, go through my applications, so there are you know six different roles: a student, parent, a staff, admin, and teacher. How do you know what is the password of these things? So you look at this organization secret key. So the password, the way to set up the password for this individual roles is that that you define those values here in this collection. I wish I could have made a different page in the application. And in a pro version, I already have that where I have a different admin SDK. You know, you can um, you can set up everything on the admin. But here, you know, just for the demo purpose, I want to show you that, you know, if for SMS roles, I have a document called 7ADM. And please make sure that it exactly looks like this. Make sure that document ID matches with the secret key. Otherwise, it's going, not going to work. So secret key is 7ADM MIL, whatever you can, you know, this is your password for the admin. Now, this is the password for the parent. So as you can see, they are very similar, but I intentionally kept it very, very different. So for all the parents, you have one secret key, 7PAR MIL. So you can, you know, name it any password you want. Make sure uh, as long as they are unique, you should be fine. First condition is the password should be unique. There's no overlapping. And third condition is the password should match with the document ID itself. So for example, document ID is 7 STD. Let me show, create, you know, show an example here. So here, suppose you say 7 STD, AIL, or whatever you want. So make sure that you have this thing here. And when you say secret key, you make sure that this exactly matches with this one. Otherwise, it's not going to work, okay? So if you're kind of, you know, this is my password. So make sure this is my, the password matches with this one, okay? Second thing is you can have a role and then you can you, you make it sure it's a parent here, okay? Now let me save this and make sure that parent one, okay, I don't need this thing, okay? Let me just make sure that this is delete this document. So you can, don't have the two parents, otherwise it's going to get confused, okay? So this is for the parent, okay? That's how you set up your, so basically that's pretty much it. So as long as you have your database set up correctly, your rules have set up correctly, and the way I have shown you the configuration in your environment.ts, everything should work very, very fine. Basically, that's all you need to set up this application. Um, if you have any question, any trouble, please, I'm going to share my um, link to my uh, Facebook group chat. So you can, you know, always post the, uh, post your comments or if you have any issues, you know, 
um, definitely I'll be able to help that out. Um, but in follow-up videos, you know, I'll try to show you, you know, I'll try to be more elaborative. The only reason I'm not doing the code along here, because there is so much code here. It's like, you know, as you can see, there are like so many files over, that's why I'm not doing the code overview here. Uh, again, you have any issues, please feel free to leave your comments and reach out to me and I'll definitely help you out. Thank you very much.